Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give you guys just a quick couple updates this Friday. So I have taken this bad boy off road on my extreme trails to test out its performance as far as torque and power. I will be posting that video on Monday. I do have to say it is a very comfortable and very capable wheel just as a heads up for that video. I have been testing a few parts for this unicycle, just as some bare minimum accessories that the wheel just does not come with. It did, if you guys saw my initial video, come with a fender. That fender, as you could see, all of the dust and up in here and the shock down there was kind of useless to say the least, so I'm going to go into detail on a few of these mods real quick. This is just a rear handle, and it does pivot up here. It does not get in the way of the shock, it does not bind, and it doesn't affect the performance of the suspension at all, but it is a nice sturdy grab point. I may raise it a little bit, just so if you have it in this upper position, you can easily get to it from the seat part, but it is a very sturdy, very good grab point for it. This will be a fairly inexpensive part. I'll throw it up on my Etsy. Since this wheel has the screws and doesn't come with a kickstand, I didn't want a big, ugly, you know, flimsy kickstand that comes out of here all the way off the back of the wheel over and to the other side. As a couple of master owners, including myself, have pointed out that kickstand with the master is not great. It can easily bend in an accident, which is what happened to me, and some of them aren't even bent properly, so there's very little clearance between it and the wheel. So I wanted to create kind of a better center of gravity, one that was aesthetically pleasing and just more minimalistic. So that is this guy here. As you can see, when it's all the way back, it clears the padding and the upper linkage by just a minimal, minimal amount. And it can come up and kind of protect your rebound area if you flip these guys back and your shock can fold down, which is nice as well. Obviously in this position, the, so the shock is going to travel, it may hit the fender, so you could leave it out. That way it's always there, so you could lean the wheel back onto it. I am kind of an unlevel grassy surface right now, or I would flip it backwards and show you guys, but it is exactly how my S22 upper kickstand is. However, instead of this one clicking on, it does have the bolt from the linkage go straight through it and it is a nice snug fit so it keeps its position so and it's a little bit larger the wheels balance of weight is up here so when you try to put a kickstand say here where the handle is all of the weight is down here and the wheel has a very very low center of gravity down there and it's topsy-turvy so that's why the master kickstand is all the way down here, because it balances it better. However, like I said, I did not want to go that route, and up here it just does not work. I tried it a couple of times, I tried it different sizes, I didn't want some honking thing sticking off. This is a good medium between the two points, and it's not too large. As you can see, obviously I will offer them in black, so it'll be a little bit more discreet. This here, you can see down in there, is the fender so i've been testing different sizes different styles of it and this one is pretty reinforced it obviously will flop around but what i did with this is on the inside down there if you guys could see that the stock metal fender is in there so rather than having something that kind of bolts on or you know takes place in these screws here where the original one does and leaves a huge gap between the tire and the fender or gaps in the battery packs or gaps from it to the battery packs in the back. I wanted to create something that kind of just slid in there and stuck to the stock metal fender. That way there's no modifications, there's no screws, no bolts, no nonsense, no added weight. It's just simple. So it goes down between the battery packs and it is edge to edge in there. 
there's about a half a millimeter of clearance. So that way, this, if you can see that dirt in there, will not happen as easily on the shock because these go all the way up against the battery packs. Again, this does not create any additional friction and it doesn't impede the suspension's ability at all. You can see the side's narrower, the side's longer. I am going to make it this length here because if you guys saw my last video, my legs were completely covered in dirt and dust off-roading because of all the stuff that flings up from the tire. You know, it doesn't just stay straight, it kind of flings outward. So this may come out a little bit more, may have more of a symmetrical profile with the tire, but it is gonna be this width. It is nearly flush with the battery pack. I might even make little channels so it does fit flush. But again, this moves, so I don't want this to create friction. But that smaller gap there and the zero gaps in here are going to prevent a lot of that dirt from getting all over you and the upper section. You can see it's all over up here too, of the shock and everything as well. So another update, the I posted it today, EZ World does not have the T4 in it. There's a couple other 100 volt Bagode wheels, but I want accuracy. So I don't really want to range test this wheel without having proper voltage or battery percentage readout. I have two different Bagode apps, a prototype and a non-prototype. Neither one shows battery voltage and the one has this wheel, but it goes in increments of 10%. So you turn it on, it shows 100, and as soon as you start rolling it, it drops down to 90%. When I took it out for about three miles, it dropped from 90 to 80%, and that was all uphill off-road. So, kind of disappointed. I don't have an accurate way to read it. I know, you know, Go George Go did a, a Facebook comment on my post and offered some suggestions, but I got stranded like five miles out on my S22 and ended up hitchhiking a ride back to my car, and I really don't want to do that with this wheel. So Monday will be the off-roading, you know, torque power comparison video and how well this actually does on single track, you know, straight uphill mountain climbing. And then hopefully by next week, Sebastian, the guy that makes EUC World, stated he will have T4 added. So once that is added, I will be doing a range test on this from full charge to extreme tilt back to let you guys know, you know, from my standpoint, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour, 220 pounds, flat road, nice weather, how far this wheel will get you at a standard cruising speed at 20, 25 miles an hour. So, hope you guys appreciate the updates. You know, I try to get out content two times a week or so. This wheel has been an absolute blast. You know, I'm trying to make minimalistic parts for this thing so they're, you know, cost effective for you guys as well as make sense and not just random nonsense. Uh, it's a great wheel, you know. I appreciate all of you. Please share the video. Please check out my Etsy account. And if you have any questions in regards to this wheel or any other wheel that I've tested or owned or even comparisons, you know, drop a comment below. I'm happy to answer. You know, conversation's always good with, with the EUC community, and I appreciate all of you. So have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.